listen to show on 1057 The Point. You know, it's not every day we have a superstar here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I do take Saturdays and Sundays off. You're right. uh, ladies and gentlemen, John Lovitz is here. Yeah! Yeah! Thank you, thank you. I can't, be- I can't believe this guy is this close to me. Isn't that crazy? Uh-huh. I'm such a huge fan. Honestly, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Thank you. You are, and we said this the other day, you are one of those guys, when you were on TV, when you're in a movie, you know the scene that you're in, the part you have, it, it, the scene stealer. <laughs> I, that's what I think. Yeah. I think everybody I in this room is is, is in agreement. I agree Absolutely. with that. Yeah. Well, I've always looked at my job is to make the scene work. Well, it works. You know, so Working I try to, you know, make it really pop. I mean, you're, you're, you're one of the, the, the most funny men on, on the face of this planet. I was telling these guys that... I can't argue. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined the word tartlet for me 20-something years ago when oh. you were on Friends playing the, the high food critic. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, my gosh. Just hilarious. Every time, Tartlet? Yeah, because she starts talking about she's making food for him because he's a food critic and she wants to impress him. Monica, the uh-huh. character Monica. I, I never, I'm the only person on earth that never watched Friends. Wow. Well. Because uh, Lovitz was on, right? Is that uh-huh. what you said? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and she says something like, I'm going to be making tartlets, and you're well, high. Well, my character, yeah, is high, and then I go, tartlet, tartlet, tartlet. Bird has lost all meaning. <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny... It's so true. I mean, obviously, you know, Saturday Night Live, you know, movies, A League of Their Own. I know that, that, that guy right there, that's his favorite oh, movie. Oh, I'm a massive fan. <laughs> a League massive of Their Own. Fan. I was you. a fan of The Critic, your, your, uh, your cartoon. Huge fan of that. Yeah, yeah, Al Jean and Mike Reese wrote that. They were they were uh, running The Simpsons, and Al Jean is still the head writer of mm-hmm. The Simpsons. And that I still do that. I just did two this year, and they're entering their thirtieth year. Of uh, for of the, the Simpsons, Simpsons. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Wow. That's Unreal. crazy. I mean, you are a guy that has had steady work for since since when? Since the, the dawn of uh, humanity. Well, I think it, well, I'm not sure, but I believe it was July fifteenth, nineteen eighty five. <laughs> Not that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good guess. And was that is that, that when you were the... hired on SNL? No, I I got a um, a movie and a sitcom the same day. Wow! But I finally got an agent. But before that, I was a it was a week before I turned twenty eight. I'd only had one job for two weeks after uh, college. It what did tough. you do? What was that job? The acting. Uh, it was a cable show called The Paper Chase. The second year it was based on the movie The Paper Chase. No, I'm talking. What's the job you had before time. before show business? Oh, a lot of them. You mean to make money? Yeah. To support. My, oh, I worked. Uh, I was an orderly at a hospital. My dad was a doctor, and I got a job there. Uh huh. I was an orderly. I was worked at a Xerox store when I lived in New York for six months. I was a. I worked at a clothing store for three years. I worked at the Messenger for a couple of years. I mean. Did you work at a Renaissance fair? I, I read somewhere. When I went to New York, I did. Yeah, that was the first time I got paid to act. It was really fun. Because you, it was everybody was really young in their twenties, and you go and you're in the Sterling Forest in the Tuxedo, New York. It was in the, it, beautiful in the woods, uh-huh. and, and we'd stay there in the weekends, and everybody was like hooking up with everybody. And what what was your was character? Fun. Did you play a character? Yeah, they said create a character, so they go whatever you want, and you'll improvise in that character all day. So I was the uh, the t- uh, town prankster, and uh huh. So I could just goof off, and did you have a name? N- no, just the, the... You were just a town prankster? <laughs> <laughs> you were the only guy without a the sword in the prankster. Renaissance. I don't know. <laughs> and that was maybe... Was that maybe your first uh, improv kind of thing? Is that where you got I your chops? I did a little in college, but no, I was... I did plays in high school, and then I went to UC Irvine, University of California at Irvine and for four years, and so it was just... Did 21 plays there and wow. learned a ton. And oh, really? Had great teachers, yeah. And what about the stand-up thing? Did you go from, like, do stand-up in college, and that kind of was your stepping stone? Well, I stone did. To... I did Lenny Bruce and Woody Allen's routines at my college dorm. On They'd have, like, a talent night, and they go, anyone can be in it and do whatever you want. So I did that. I would learn their routines. and. So you were like a cover them. comic. Yeah, well, just for that night, you know, I would do yeah. it in my dorm. It was fun. Just And then I was, I was, oh, I wanted to do stand-up right after college. I thought, all right, this is a way, good way to start. And a guy was teaching a workshop. For stand up, and he said, Oh, they're not hiring stand ups for sitcoms. And they were, but they weren't hiring him, but I, I believed him. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going, What are you talking about? Robin Williams just got more comedy, and this one did this. And, you know, not for you. Well, he said no, and I believed him for some reason. I think it worked so I was out like, okay. Oh, I guess I'll skip that step. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would do it here and there, and I got SNL, and Dennis Miller said, You could be a stand up, and he'd bring me to the clubs. But I, I got up, I didn't know what I was doing. 
But I, I started doing it about <clears throat> 15 years ago, and then uh, it took a couple of years to really like get an act together. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles, and um, Jamie Masada owns it was great. Let me do that, and then I started, you know, I, I would like op- uh, host shows with like mm-hmm. guys from SNL. And then I would like uh, open for Norm Macdonald and co-headline. And then after a couple of years, I started headlining by myself. Yeah, and you're at I've Helium. Been doing that ever since. You're at Helium Comedy Club. You got a show tonight at eight o'clock. Uh, tomorrow at seven thirty. Saturday seven thirty yeah. and ten o'clock. Yeah, I think this is my third time back at Helium. Yeah, I've been here twice. It's yeah. a great place. Mm-hmm. I think Helium. They have a lot of clubs. Yeah, Helium. <laughs> it starts running together. No, it could have been a different club. I don't know. I think yeah, it Helium. It's my third time in St. Louis anyway. Yeah, it was a, well, that was actually St. Louis. Helium, they have clubs they have in yeah, Philadelphia, yeah. Portland. They have them all over, so they're they're really great clubs. Yeah, the Helium yeah. here in, in St. Louis is it's pretty new, maybe it's a year or two old. Real nice. Yeah. Oh, really a year nice. or two? Then, yeah, I guess I haven't been there. Yeah. It's nice. I don't know where I was. It was St. Louis Obispo, <laughs> California. My third time Were you in just some random person's basement just doing something? you. Might have been. I guess they went out of business. <laughs> what, what? I mean, you're you're one of the most recognizable faces in, in show business, I, I, generational. Oh, I, well, I think thank so. Thank you. Is it is it just my generation, or is it you no, know is it everybody? It's mine too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh my kids Absolutely. are my kids are freaking out that I'm meeting you today. Just because of uh, oh, okay. mostly because of a league of their own. Oh, uh, 17, 10, 20, 8. Got a really? bunch of them. Yeah, there's there's wow. I could go on, but all of them are, <laughs> <laughs> all of them are excited. Well, I still, yeah, I feel very lucky. I mean, it's, but when you say that, I'm like, oh, really? Because it's like, you always feel like you're just trying to get more work. Do people yeah. bother it you? It never ends. Do people bother you a lot? What's something annoying that, what would annoy you if somebody randomly I'm not going to gonna say that. Then Why not? not? Everybody's going to come up it. and do it. <laughs> somebody asking me that question. <laughs> well, I guess the most annoying thing would be, uh, now they're gonna do it. Uh, I guess if some, you know, beautiful blonde girl in her twenties came up to me and said, "Well, you want to come home and we'll just go nuts and go to the massage uh, you." Know, I can see where that would bother you. That could you. be annoying. <laughs> no, do people, yeah. do people come up to you and, and want you to do a character or, "Hey, say this, say that. Come on, monkey, say this." Sometimes, yeah, yeah, and I'll say I'm not a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> they go right back to eating your salad, right? But it's flattering, you know. The only thing I don't like is when they're drunk. Oh yeah. yeah, and and listen, comedy then, clubs. That gets annoying. Uh, what what would they ask you to do? Like, what's the one thing that people come up and say, "Hey, John Lovitz, I, I d- do this." They don't really do that. They just say something that they can have a picture. And do you mind? I mean, is it? No, I don't mind. No, because it's um. You know, I just, I just, I don't take, I don't take it for granted. I feel grateful that I'm working still. I've never taken it for granted. Mm-hmm. And uh, I grew up in the valley in, in Los Angeles in the suburb of Tarzana. So I said, uh, they go, you don't have a fat head. I go, well, it's hard, hard to get a fat head when you're from the land of the apes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because Edgar Rice Burroughs had a farm there. Who He wrote Tarzan, uh-huh. and that's why it's called Tarzana. So it, it's just, I don't know. I just, I never bought into the whole. Well, it's part well, of I, I don't know what's the point of you. You work really hard and you succeed, and then you're arrogant. It doesn't make sense to me. I think it was. I think it was watching it's comedians in cars you know? getting coffee. With, you know, Jerry Seinfeld show, and uh, he was talking to Zach Galifianakis, and uh, Zach Galifianakis, uh, Galifianakis asked Jerry Seinfeld, "Hey, do you care if people come up to you?" And just take a picture randomly. He goes, no, I don't care. He goes, this is what I signed up for. Yeah, because Zach was kind of against it a little bit, wasn't he? I think that's what they're pushback. Yeah, like he does. Yeah, was, maybe yeah. it's a newer generation gets mm-hmm. annoyed with, oh, I'm taking my. I picture don't think they're again. annoyed. It's just you're, you're like, you're with your family or you're ha- you're with a friend and you're talking and then people, you know, you'll be in a restaurant and then and then in a booth, whatever, and they'll just sit down next to you and they're drunk and they're, oh. <laughs> you know, it, it's like it's not pleasant. Yeah, but you usually take a picture and they go away, right? No, they don't go away. <laughs> I was just saying, I mean, even yeah, on a you much... You finally say you got to go, and then on, they get mad. Yeah, on know. a much smaller scale, I mean, we deal with that, you know. The, and, and I think he's talking about, like, the overly intoxicated, like, putting their arm around us, hugging, hanging. Well, if you're rude, like, but I, I yeah. don't mind. I take pictures. I mean, I don't, you know. Like a selfie? Like, oh, let's do a selfie Well, together. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, I, I would... If I saw someone admired, I'd go, oh, oh, can I get a picture? I mean, I understand it. Yeah. Now it's about pictures. It's flattering, you know. I don't. I don't look at it as like it's not insulting. They're excited to see you. It's not a big deal. Who would you see that you'd want to get a selfie with? Who? Yeah. 
off the top of my head, Willie Mays. But I got to meet him. He was my idol growing up. Oh, yeah? So I have a picture with him. Hmm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now but, it's... You know, I'm no different. The people you grew up watching and stuff, you'd... Right. you'd... Yeah. Now it's pictures, not not autographs. Oh, yeah. Now kids don't want... Does, when was the last time a kid came up and asked for an autograph? Mm. Now it's a selfie. Right. Selfies are the new autographs. That's their autograph. I don't off. know how they do, but... I don't know. It, ha- it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like literally trying to remember. Some guy came up to me at the airport with his kids and, can we get a picture of my kids? And I'm like, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> kids uh, uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here on a Thursday because Thursdays we do something called the Craigslist Freak of the Week. Now, what we do is we scour worldwide, the worldwide Craigslist personal sections. We go to different countries. And we scour the personals, the, the misconnections, the the uh, the rants and raves, gigs even sometimes. Yeah. So we find our favorite freaky ads. Mr. John Patrico over here reads them, and our listeners vote for their favorite freak of the week. And we have a year end tournament where we get all the freaks together, <laughs> and uh, we have one freak of the year. And does, do you notify that person uh, that they won? No, they're probably in jail. <laughs> Not I, a chance. We, I, I think these want to, these people want to remain anonymous, but uh, you yeah. call the guy up going, "You won Freak of the Year," the, and, and he's in Germany. He's like, <laughs> 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 We actually have a plaque hanging in our office with the names mm-hmm. of the freaks on them. So we ask our listeners to go into our chat room at 1057thepoint.com slash Riz. Did you ever find one of the ads and, and then it was you? <laughs> I'm like, well, well, we suspect few people one of here. our guys. Of mine, yeah, but, uh-huh. So John's going to read the ads. You guys uh, out listening are going to vote for your favorite freak using our Twitter handle, at R-I-Z-Z Show. John who? Not me. No. no. The other John. That, other John. John. that yeah. John right there. He's going to read the ads. Now, you are going to sit and listen uh, yeah. and comment. Uh-huh. Fine. This is this is fun, John. You're gonna love this. Uh-huh. You're gonna love this. And you, this is um, you're gonna look maybe at people differently. Because I say these people could be your your friends, your neighbors, the the, the kindly gentleman. Not that, if they're from Germany. That brings your mail. You don't have a house in Germany. Uh-huh. Nine. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, these could be your your kids' preschool teachers. I I don't know. I don't know. Right. These, these people are anonymous, but they're out there. They live amongst us. Yes, they do. So, ladies and gentlemen, we present you with the Craigslist Freak of the Week. John Lovitz is here. John Patrico is going to start reading the ads. So, John, feel free to comment whenever you want. And, uh, John, you ready? Oh, let's do it. Here we go. Craigslist Freak of the Week. It's ad number one. Let's go to Germany. Marry a lesbian. Man for a woman, 36-year-old, Berlin, Germany. I want to marry a lesbian. I want no sex, not even a kiss on the cheek. This is just so I can stay here legally. We'll get married, and you can have your girlfriend or whatever the hell you lezzies call each other. Just clean the house for me, cook a meal once in a while, and stay to yourself. My parents will be paying for everything. We'll have the ceremony, and all I ask is that you act like you're into it. After that, I don't care. I just need you there legally. I am up for a threesome if you're looking for it. But if your lady friend is disgusting, then no thank you. As long as you're not butch, okay? (laughs) You'll be rewarded for your services. Trust me. We'll need to get this done on the quick. Time is of the essence. Please respond quickly. All right, there is your uh, first nominee. Well, that all sounds very reasonable. (laughs) (laughs) Sign me up. Very honest, you know. So this is a gentleman, I guess, looking to stay in the country, needs to to get an anchor. And I don't know why a lesbian, per se. I don't know. I guess maybe so that they don't have to. Because he doesn't want a woman to get involved with him. But I think think that um, it's so honest that you'd have to trust the guy. (laughs) I mean, he couldn't be more blunt. You will be rewarded for your service. Right. Trust me. Mom's okay. paying for everything. As long as, you know, as long as you're not butch. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. The funniest part is clean the house, cook a meal, and stay to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect wife. The Leave me the hell alone. <laughs> that is what we all want to say. Yeah. Well, he's 36 years old, and his, his parents are going to take care of everything, which is odd, too. It is, uh... 
All right, out of Berlin, man for woman, Let's marry see. a lesbian. Names for this uh, person? Uh, we've got a couple here. We've got uh, WWE superstar Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. What we do is we name these people for identification purposes. I would like to name him them Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> Why? No, it's too close to my name. All right, sorry. How about St. Louis Rizzo? There you go. <laughs> uh, we also have Trent Lesnar. Okay. Ike Turner. Uh -huh. uh, Thin Lezzy. I like Thin Lezzy. Yeah. Or Leslie Nielsen. Ooh. Hmm. Moon, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I like uh, I like Thin Lezzy. All right, Thin Lezzy. Lesby Lezzy. friends. <laughs> Lesby friends. Thin Lezzy. All right. That's a nominee number one. Oh, boy. This one. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be here for this. No. This, this one's a bad one. <laughs> All right. Here is nominee number two, John Lovitz. Get ready for this one. Here is John Patrico. Craig's a Freak of the Week, ad number two. Up for a challenge. Man for anyone. 24-year-old, Tel Aviv, Israel. I used to play this game with my older brother when we were teens. He would eat something, and I'd have to guess what it was by sifting through his droppings. Oh gotta be kidding me. I was pretty good at it. The key is smell and texture. Wait, wait. Since my brother has been in the Army, we haven't played in a while. Uh, and I'm jonesing to play. I think this is a. Cat. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it's a blast. You go first. Before you come over, write down everything you ate over the last 24 hours. Be specific. Go into the bathroom, make toilet, call me in, and I'll get to work. We can make money bets. If you ate 10 different things, I'll bet I can guess five of them. Then it's my turn. I'll make a toilet, and you get to work. I'll provide the gloves. I have the ones that go all the way to the elbows. Hit me up if interested. All right. <laughs> Not hitting you up. Who's interested ever? I think this is a dog that can type. <laughs> This is not a person. It's either a cat or a dog. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. Well, listen, he's got the gloves that go up to the elbow. Right. I mean. So, he's, so. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think this is a guy that's just... Oh. Trolling? Joking and saying, let's see who answers. Don't know. I think you wrote this. I think <laughs> No. I'm giving the name Rizzo, Rizzo again. Is, that's my name. R Rizzo again. Again. Yeah. Rizzo, Rizzo again? Uh, junior. Uh, All right, so this is from uh, Tel Aviv, I think. Um, any, anybody's up for a challenge, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why not? Oh, sorry. Riz Stein again. The, uh, the key is uh, smell and texture. Uh, that's the key. It's time. And I guess this guy used to do this with his brother, who's now in the Army, and just wants to do it again. I think we figured uh -huh. out why his brother's in the Army. Get the hell away from this guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you know, it's... You make a toilet and then... Uh, sounds, it and sounds like something Chris Farley would do. <laughs> <laughs> Besides uh, Rizzo, too, any any names for... Uh, uh, there's a couple. <laughs> I, there's two really good ones here. Scatman Do is a good oh, one. Okay. Oh, also, uh, you know the Doobie Brothers? The Duty Brothers? The Duty Ooh, Brothers. Duty Brothers. I think that's that the one, one we need to go with there. <laughs> St. Louis Connection. Uh, well, I have a question. <laughs> yes? So you said this is freaky. Like, what? I mean, I, what's the weird part? <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem with this? I think we have a new name for this. <laughs> Number two you is never John did Lovitz. This? <laughs> no, would your brother know? No, I might do it with my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Seems totally normal to me. Oh, where's the freak stuff come in? Yeah, huh? fun with poop. Oh, I saw that one. I was I was gonna die. You're oh. so conservative. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the Midwest. And closed-minded. Oh. All right, ready for uh, freak number three? Oh, yeah. Our third and final freak. Yeah, number two was the uh, Duty Brothers. Right. Uh, moon for. Uh, gotcha. I got it for the voting. For the voting. Mm-hmm. All right, Freak of the Week, John Patrico, ad number two. I'm sorry, ad number three. Here we go, coming at you. Golf on Sunday, need a partner. Man for caddy, 50-year-old, Alberta, Canada. Hey, guys, hey. 50 years old, and I'm looking to head down to the States for a week to play some golf. Looking for a travel companion, caddy. I'll buy your plane ticket. 
I'll buy your round of golf, and I'll buy your meal while you're hanging with me. All you have to do is give me some sound golf advice and then join me at the 19th hole. Oh, Get it? <laughs> After golf, we will head back to our motel and see where things take us. I am shaved, eight strong inches, and jacked. You must be on the smaller side below the waist and also shaven. I hate hair in my mouth. Oh, my Yuck. God. <laughs> but I do want you to be able to take some abuse. I won't be holding anything back. I'll take a three-wood right to the back nine. I plan on flying out in a couple of weeks. You have to be under 20 and willing to go all the way. Send a picture of you holding a recent newspaper so I know that you are real. Bottomless and at attention, a plus. Thanks. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I just realized something. Wow. I hope I hope and think my 17-year-old daughter likes me enough, but I know for a fact she's watching right now and listening just Ooh. because Mr. Lovitz is on, on the show, and I just realized she's listening to all this. Oh, hey. Uh, hey. Hey, kid. Hey. 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 Good you're you're Good done. Job. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, all right, so uh, just some golf. Golf? Dinner. All right, if this isn't Rizzo, <laughs> I give up. He is eight strong, by the way. Uh, you a golfer, John? Uh-huh. Not like this. <laughs> uh, new kind of try. Like this. Oh. Uh, you're, oh gonna, God. you're getting a dinner? I mean, <laughs> he's flying you up. All right. Well, the funniest thing about this is he goes, I hate hair in my mouth. Yuck. <laughs> That's the part that made him say yuck. <laughs> How about I'm shaved eight inches strong as Jack? Yeah. <laughs> Bottomless and an attention. Yuck. <laughs> the whole thing is yuck. But the only thing that's yucky to him is the ugh. So the name should be yuck. <laughs> if a man would post this, yuck. <laughs> I named the guy fuck you. Oh, 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 I didn't mean to say yucky. <laughs> Sorry. That was an accident. <laughs> oh, Canadian, P-H- <laughs> U Q E. Well, let's get a name for it. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, get a name. Golf on oh, Sunday. Need a partner. I, That's I, all good. I, 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 That's uh, why I got that dump button. Dude, somebody, yeah. somebody texted this over. It's great. Phil Tickleson. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Tickleson. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's one of the best. All right. Well, there you go. How there tigers, are your tigers wood. <laughs> you know what? Oh, We've had that. We've already We've had, had that, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, excuse already... me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, first time here. Yeah. We've already had that one, John. <laughs> 2012. You don't remember? Yeah. I can't even read this. It's making me <laughs> disgusting. Right, well, there, those are your your three ads. <laughs> Wait till the playoffs. I mean, the playoffs are vomit-inducing. Who picked these ads? Is it you? We, I mean, we, we kind of powwow. Nah, but I think you read it and you went, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to read this. Hey, I'd by like the way, hear John read this one. Uh, uh, yeah, we got to thank it. our fine sponsor for Craigslist Freak of the Week, Dirt Cheap, 12 area locations, cheap, cheap, fun, fun. Uh-huh. Yes, John, this is a sponsored segment. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pays to do this. <laughs> All right, so let's go over these, and we'll pick our favorite freaks, uh, and you'll vote via Twitter at R-I-Z-Z Show. Nominee number one is uh, Thin Lezzy. That is the guy who wants to live with a uh, pair of lesbians. He has to marry one of them, and because he wants to legally stay in Germany, and this is the only way that it'll happen. He doesn't want anything to do with you, though. Just leave him to hell alone. He just wants to marry a lesbian. His parents will pay for everything. That's right. In other words, his parents don't want him coming back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Just stay. Mm -hmm. Nominee number two is the Duty Brothers. This is a guy. Who uh, wants to guess what you've eaten by going through your sample? There's not much uh-huh. else to say about that. Uh-huh. Make and, a toilet. And you just heard uh, from nominee number three, Phil Tickleson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we start with John Patrico. Yeah. John, if you were to vote for one freak, I know. I know. Hmm. And, and you know how this works. You know, one of these freaks will move on to the next round of the freak of the year playoffs. Come on, don't. Vying to be, huh? vying to be on that Jerry Sandusky memorial, tri- uh, memorial plaque. Who are we going with, John? You know, I tell you, I had a shoe in, I thought, until John started talking about number three and how bad it is. I don't know. I'm going 
I, I got to stick with it. Number two. All right. Okay. Oh, number two. An honorable mention name for number three is John Gailey. That would have been great, too. <laughs> mm, that's good too. that's yeah, an no. honorable mention. I mean, number two is Can just I bad. Say, notice yeah. something. Do you think it's weird that this John here sounds exactly like the guy that wrote that last letter? <laughs> <laughs> and weird, and huh? you want to know what's even crazier, John? Right. It's tomorrow. I'm going to play. He golf. leaves on a golf trip. I'm on a Ooh. golf trip tomorrow. Oh, the whole trip. Uh huh. Oh, for the weekend. You don't have a partner oh. yet. I well, it wasn't even like caddy. he was reading. It's like he was I'm, just. I'm looking. It sounded so natural. <laughs> <laughs> just talking you know, off the top I'm of looking his head. For, uh, caddy it's almost for... like it was his own words. It was like acting, saying. but it was on a level that I've never. Are you asking to be his caddy? I was reading the script, but it was I too... He's, bu he's busy this weekend, It was I know. too real. It was too believable. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Ask to be his caddy. Uh, <laughs> I know. You're busy. I know. Mr. Lovitz, who are you going to vote for? So you have three, you have, you have three <laughs> to choose from. One of these ads moving on to the next round. The last, uh, the last, uh, <laughs> the last one. Uh, Phil really? Tickleson? Phil Tickleson. Yeah. Phil Tickleson. <laughs> Over the Duty Brothers, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I am. I, 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 the Duty Brothers. I played that game with my dog. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. It's just but the bad. last one is just. A, All right. That's what I said. John Lovitz. Uh, uh, it's uh, Phil Tickleson. Uh, Moon. Oh, man. When it comes to freaky stuff, <laughs> we're, we're in a different ballpark with dogs and humans, and, and Duty Brothers takes this hands down. <laughs> hands down. That Jeff. guy has had a past I don't want to know about. Yeah, he wants to continue doing this, but he used to do it with his brother, too. Yeah, no. Which is pretty gross. So I'll go with number two Family as well. thing. Duty uh -huh. Brothers, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's more gross with a brother, but. I don't know. What does uh, one have to happen in their life to go Maybe down I'll that path? Maybe I'll switch to two, because <laughs> the third one is just a gay guy. Right? <laughs> it's a gay guy We're looking for a golf partner. Uh-huh. But the way he but, describes yeah, it. Yeah, the way like, he explains oh. what he wants. <laughs> Ugh. What traumatic thing in somebody's life has to ha have happened for them to go down? The path number two went down. Literally. I just I... think he thought it would. It's just fun. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good time. Let's try it. Just up for a challenge. <laughs> Tones? Oh, it's got to be uh, very fittingly number two. Okay, Tony. And I will go with number two as well. The funny thing about number two is that he says he misses it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I miss going through my brother's poop and trying to guess what he ate. Uh -huh. I miss it. Uh, it's really about brotherly love. He misses his brother. And well, that's how they got close. Right. That's nice, isn't it? That's, yeah, it is how they got close. Uh, that joins the army. All right, it's up to you guys. Vote via Twitter at RIZZ. And he's from Israel. On behalf of all Jews, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see John Lovitz tonight, 8 o'clock, Friday, tomorrow, 7.30, Saturday, 7.30, and 10 o'clock. What else are we plugging? Anything else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure you got a podcast. Everybody's well, I'm not podcast. plugging anything, but that third guy. <laughs> <laughs> any any TV shows? Any, uh, any Oh, I'm on a, a game blogs. show. It's called Funny You Should Ask. It's like Hollywood Squares, kind of, but it's, it's six comics, and they just... It's just a silly. We just tell jokes all the time. That's in syndication. Oh, that's great. What, but they what? got really good co comedians on there. I'm on there all the time. Louis Anderson and. What's it called again? Funny, you should ask. I'm gonna write that down and I'm gonna watch that. <laughs> Funny, you should ask. All right. It's just jokes. It's like, <laughs> really. It's just jokes. Just jokes. It's a game show, but it's really more just about telling jokes. There's about, yeah, every show there's like eighteen, or no. Eight, 21 jokes every show. Well, oh. you're the guy to do it. Yep. And it's an yeah. honor to have you in the studio, and I yeah, appreciate you even is. stopping by. And I'm honored to be in your new studio. How nice is this, huh? We got a window and everything. Yeah, yep. real nice. It's a beautiful studio. Thank you. State of the art. Thank you. We've been here three... Or as the last guy would say, stayed at the fart. <laughs> <laughs> three three weeks and change, and, you know, it's, it's not sullied yet, but we're getting there. We'll get there. We'll invite that number two guy to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's in the <laughs> <laughs>